So, ever wondered how you can boost your Godot 2D scenes thanks to some nice lights and shadows? Cause yeah, if you've ever set up a simple 2D level in Godot, you've probably noticed that when you run the game, you actually see everything clearly by default. All your nodes are absolutely visible, contrary to a 3D scene for example, where the scene will be plunged in the dark until you have a real 3D light node inside it. That being said, this level is also pretty flat and basic looking. That can be absolutely fine for some art styles of course, but what if you want your game to have a bit more depth? What if you want to add in some lights and shadows, like this? Oh and by the way, if you want to go further and actually get all the demo files for this tutorial, plus other exclusive rewards and content, then be sure to check out my Patreon. And of course, a big thanks to all of my current members who make these videos possible. Okay, so let's say that for now we have a simple 2D scene like this one. Here I have one sprite to node for the background that uses a plain white rect texture and that I've tinted orange with the self-modulate property. And then on top of it I have five grey rectangles placed, scaled and rotated in various ways. Now I'm going to add a new node in this scene that is a light 2D. More precisely, you see that Godot offers us two types of 2D lights. We have directional lights, that are basically like sun rays casting lights and shadows in one direction as if they were at an infinite distance, and point lights that light up a small area around them with a given fall off and optionally matching shadows. For now, let's start with the directional light, that is a bit easier to set up. As soon as we add this node in the scene, you see that our colors change quite a lot because this light also lights the entire scene with a new global lighting, and so our orange is turned into a lighter yellow, for example. We can of course change the strength of this sunlight by decreasing its energy property in the inspector, typically to something like 0.3. Alright, so we now have a big sun-like light that impacts the entire level, but what if we open the shadow section over here and we enable them? Well, not much happens actually. And even if we change the shadow color and increase its alpha component, there are still no shadows in our scene. So what's the matter here? In fact, for spreads to cast shadows, we needed to tell Godot that they aren't just 2D visuals in the scene, but that they're actually part of the lighting system. And to do that, we need to give them a matching light occluder. So let's add a new node in our scene as a child of our sprite. This is not required, but I find it easier to keep related nodes together like this. And this node will be of type Light Occluder 2D. As shown by this little warning, we need to define the occluder polygon for this node, meaning what 2D shape our object should have with regards to lighting. Once we've created the polygon in the inspector, we can use the controls at the top to add, move or delete points from it, and thus draw a shape that matches our square sprite. And sure enough, you see that as soon as we close our occluder polygon, the light occluder starts working and our block now indeed blocks the lights, creating this long shadow throughout the whole scene. And yep, you see that now if we reselect our sunlight and rotate it, that shadow indeed moves accordingly. Then if you don't want this occluder to darken the block itself, you can turn the light occluder node alpha off by changing its self-modulate property, and there we go, we've now got a simple square that casts a shadow based on the rotation of our global directional light. If we want, we can also place the corners of our occluder polygon to match our sprite exactly by directly editing the positions of those points in the inspector. And so finally, if we do the same for all five blocks in the level, you see that we get these darker bands across the background for each shadow, and if we rotate the sunlight, everything updates instantly as expected. Alright, so now that we know the basics and that we can cast shadows in our 2D scene for a directional light, let's see how to do something similar but for the other type of 2D lights, the point lights. Let's hide our directional light for now and add a new node of point light 2D type. You see that nothing really happens, and there's a warning on our new node. That's because, as Godot tells us, a 2D point light needs an extra resource to work, a texture to define the shape of the light. Basically, in this engine, we set the shape and so the falloff of a 2D point light by giving it a reference white texture, and usually with transparency. So for example, the same point light 2D node could look pretty different based on this texture, as you can see here. In this tutorial, I'm going to use this texture that creates a discrete two steps fall off. Now, you'll notice that by default, the range of the point light is directly determined by the size of this shape texture. 
However, we can of course scale it up or down thanks to this texture scale parameter. And so if we move our point light to somewhere in the middle of the level, in between our blocks, and we enable shadows, you see that thanks to our previous light occluded nodes on each block, the point lights fall off indeed gets cut in places, just like a real light would get obstructed by walls. Just like before with the directional light, we can also play with the energy option to define how strong this point light should be. And finally, since this time this light isn't global, but it only impacts a given area in the scene, you may want to create one or more point lights in the scene to properly illuminate the whole thing. And in that case, you'll see that where the follow-ups overlap, the energies add up. Finally, all of those point lights can also mix with the directional light we had before, so if we re-enable it, we see that our blocks now get illuminated by our various light sources and cast shadows based on all of those combined. But what if you didn't actually want all of those lights to blend at the same time? Sometimes it can be interesting to layer or group your lights in some way, so that only specific sources impact specific objects in a scene. And for that, you'll want to use Godot's light layers and masks. In short, if you select one of your light occluder nodes, then you'll see that in the inspector there is this occluder light mask property that you can tweak, and just like physics layers, it presents as a grid of cells, one for each possible light layer, and you can toggle every layer on or off just by clicking on the matching cell. This allows you to put your occluder on one or more light layers very easily. For example, here, suppose that we toggle off the first default light layer, then our occluder basically becomes inactive, because it's not on any light layer anymore, and so our block doesn't cast any shadow anymore. But now, if we enable the second light layer for our occluder, then select one of our point lights and only cast lights for occluders on the light layer number 2, meaning this block we just modified, then you indeed see that the block below that is still on the light layer number 1 doesn't cast a shadow for this point source anymore, and only the block at the top actually does. Though we could obviously re-enable both shadows super quickly by making our point light consider both objects on the light layers 1 and 2, like this. Now, of course, light layers and masks are a pretty advanced tool, and they aren't always required to light up a scene. But it can still be a nice technique to keep in the back of your head if you ever need it to set up more complex systems. But in any case, there you go. You now know how to set up some cool lighting for your Godot 2D scenes, and how to improve your visuals with shadows. Again, don't forget that you can get some unique rewards on my Patreon over here. And if you've ever wondered how to create some cool 2D split screen, for example for your local multiplayer game, then you might want to check out this other video I published recently. But yeah, in any case, feel free to react in the comments down below. And as always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.